Hello guys, welcome back for another Savvy Savvy Breakdown. Today's topic is going to be all about master writs. We're going to be covering what exactly they are, why do people even want them, and all you need to know before trying to complete one of these, and the best part, how to get some of them yourself. To start us off, what are master writs? In-game lore describes them as mysterious, exclusive contracts for high quality and very specific equipment or very specific alchemical substances, enchantments, or provisions. Unlike the daily crafting writs that don't require high specificity on style, quality, or traits, master writs do require these features to be met for completion. Master writs are available in every form of crafting in ESO. Enchanting, alchemy, jewelry, provisioning, blacksmithing, clothing, woodworking. So regardless of what craft you have decided to make your profession, you can find a master writ to complete. So why do people even want to do master writs in the first place? Upon completion of a master writ, you receive a unique currency called writ vouchers and a significant amount of experience. These writ vouchers can be used to buy items from Mastercraft mediators, Rolis Halalu or Faustina Curio. These two have items including storage containers, crafting benches, furnishings, and a large variety of other materials. These vendors are located in Elden Root, Wayrest, and Mordhold. Another key aspect of why people complete Master Writs is for the chunk of experience that you get upon completion of them. Each type of Writ gives a different amount of experience. The video by Belevenant Bo D did an amazing job breaking this down and showing their research into this topic. A link to their video is in the description below. The short version though of their video is that equipment master writs are going to give more experience than consumable master writs. But as you're going to see later, equipment master writs do require a bit more effort than consumable master writs, making this difference in experience understandable. So what do you need to know before completing a master writ? Let's break down the information found within the Master Writ itself. When looking at this sealed Clothier Writ, you will see the instruction Consume to start quest. When consumed or used, sealed Master Writs will go into your quest log. Note: You can only have one Master Writ quest open in your quest log for each type of Master Writ. This is important because if you aren't able to complete the quest, there is no way to unconsume the master writ. Your option will be either to wait until you can complete the master writ, preventing you from opening up another master writ of that type, or you will have to abandon the quest, causing you to lose the writ completely. So this is why being able to preview what the writ requires is very useful to know what it's asking for prior to accepting it. Either in the quest log post opening a sealed master writ or while previewing the master writ in your inventory, you can see the parameters for the craft request. Here it clarifies item, quality, trait, set, and style. Let's break down these areas further. Items are going to be your typical pieces you can craft at any crafting station. Robes at a clothing station, daggers at a blacksmithing station, staves at a woodworking station, and necklaces at a jewelry station. These items are always going to be of the CP150 quality. This means that for the following crafts, it will require the following base materials. For enchanting, you're going to need Rapora or Atire, Potency Runes, Alchemy is going to require Lorcan's Tears or Alkahis Solvents, Jewelry is going to require Platinum Ounces, Provisioning is going to be Frost Mirum or Perfect Row, Blacksmithing is going to be Rubidite Ingots, 
clothing is going to be either ancestor silk or rubido leather and woodworking is going to be sanded ruby ash. Now these are just your base materials that you're going to need to craft the basic item. The next line we're looking at on a master writ is going to be the quality. Quality refers to upgrades that are going to need to be made for each item. Equipment crafted items are always the base white quality and then need upgrading according to what is requested. It is important that you have your crafted skill at the maximum level and have the passage for improvement purchased so you can have the 100% chance of a successful upgrade and require less material. A breakdown of the different quality levels are going to be normal is the white color, fine is the green color, superior is the blue color, epic is the purple color, and legendary is going to be the gold or yellow colored writs. Upgrading materials are going to be different for each type of craft. Jewelry is going to require turn, iridium, zircon, and chromium platings. Blacksmithing is going to require honing stones, dwarven oil, grain solvent, and tempering alloy. Clothing is going to be hemming, embroidery, elegant lining, and drew wax. Woodworking is going to be pitch, turpin, mastic, and rosin. These upgrade materials can be found either through guild traders, completing your daily crafting writs, or through the refinement of raw crafting materials. The next feature of a master writ that we're going to look at is the trait. Traits are special properties on items to do a variety of effects. What is important for master writs is that you will have to have had completed the research on a specific trait on a specific item type in order to craft an item with that trait. So if you want to craft, say, a divine's robe, you will need it to have completed the research for a divine robe on that character that you wish to craft this on. Because there is a lot of information about learning traits and the best way to optimize this, I will be doing a future video describing research on traits in the future. The next feature that we're going to look at for Master Ritz is going to be set. Set refers to the crafted set table that can be found in Overland World in ESO. You either have to go to the crafting location designated for that specific set or have access to a crafting station that has been attuned to that set. These are typically found in a player home of a designated guild hall. To craft these sets, research of numerous traits is needed. Some sets, like Ashen Grip, only require two traits to be researched, while other sets, like New Moon Acolyte, will require nine traits of that specific item to be researched. The number of traits needed to be researched is for that item, not all items. So if I want to craft a New Moon Acolyte robe, I will have needed to have completed research on nine different traits for robes. So not only will you need to have the research done for the trait that is requested by your master writ, you will also have to have a variety of other traits researched in order to be able to craft certain sets. The next thing is going to be the style. In the Elder Scrolls Online Master Writs, style is referring to the motifs and not style pages. This is something that's a little bit confusing that they don't clarify that language. In the Elder Scrolls Online, as of update 36, there are 116 different motif styles in the game. To be able to craft a motif style, you need to learn the motif page for that type of item you want to craft 
and have the required crafting style material also. For example, if you needed to craft a restoration stave in the Bloodforge style, you would need to learn the motif for staves in the Bloodforge style. You do not need to know the complete motif, just the motif type that you need for your master writ. There are going to be level requirements in order to craft different styles, but as per the previous step with improving quality, you're going to want to have the maximum crafting rank anyway, so this is not going to be a problem when completing your master writs. So now that we've fully broken down all that you need to know about how to read a master writ and what it's asking for with each of the different elements, you're ready to start completing some of them yourself. But first you need to get some of them. You can either buy sealed master writs from guild traders or by earning them yourself. Master writs have a chance to drop upon completion of daily crafting writs. Various factors can help increase the chance of a sealed master writ drop. Now that you know how to read a master writ, you know how to get some master writs, now comes the fun part of completing them. This is going to be as simple as fulfilling the order exactly how they tell you. If you play without add-ons or you're on console, just follow the quest markers at the craft station of the requested set and you'll see what you need to craft. If you have access to add-ons, I'm going to highly recommend the add-on Ritworthy. I'm going to do an in-depth video on how to set it up and how to get the most from this amazing add-on very soon. I just felt it was appropriate to fully explain Rits themselves prior to just covering an add-on about Master Rits. But with that guys, I hope you learned something new today about Master Rits. These are a fun challenge to work towards completing in the Elder Scrolls Online. As you start researching more traits, you learn more motifs, and you start gathering more crafting materials, these will become easier to do the longer you play the game. So if you're just starting out and you get some Master Writs, don't worry too much about not being able to complete them immediately. Think of them more like something to do in the long term. But with that guys, I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you learned something new, make sure to like the video and subscribe. We have an, some other ESO content from other Savvy Savvy Breakdown. Two, we also have gold making tips and even some fun lore videos here on the channel. So make sure to check those out. Nothing else. Thank you all so much for joining me today. And I hope to see you all again real soon. With that, bye!